Hey guys, Swift here again with a short 3D canvas tutorial all about the cutscene panel. You've maybe already seen people posting clips of their scenes in 3D canvas with some really nice camera work going on, and this is the tool they use to achieve that. You can get some pretty great effects with it, but it's surprisingly simple, so let's get into it. So the tool can be found in the 3D canvas sidebar. You can click on this little cube over here to open that up. And the button we're looking for is this one here, labelled Cutscenes. That'll open up this tiny little window over here. You can press the question mark to do the 3D Canvas tour for the cutscene panel, which does a pretty good job at explaining it. But aside from that, the only other button here is Add Clip. Once we click on that, we now have a new cutscene clip that we're working on. It starts out called New Clip, but you can click on just here to rename it. So let's call it Intro Cutscene. So. With these buttons on the right, you can delete the clip, switch edit mode on and off, or manually play the clip. The immersive mode checkbox hides Foundry's user interface while the clip is playing, which is great for making proper cutscene type stuff. And save to macro will save this whole clip as a macro that you can fire off either manually or using some other clever tool. Other than that, the add keyframe button is how we actually get started making a cutscene. Before we click on that though, it's probably worth thinking about what we want our clip to actually be. For this video, I'll just make a really simple one. Let's have the camera move sideways down the road, and then at the end of the movement, let's have it stop around about here, and then rotate to face this guy here, the maestro. So with that kind of movement, that means we have three key frames of animation. The start point, which will be somewhere over here, the point where the camera stops moving, which will be somewhere around here, and the end point where it's rotated to look at this maestro over here. So, if we click on Add Keyframe, we'll get a box titled Keyframe 0, and inside are various options. We'll ignore most of these for now. The important one is Capture Camera Position, this camera looking button here. So, first thing to do is to move your camera to where you want the cutscene to start. So I'm going to start over here, maybe looking off towards the woods here. And so we're taking into account the position of the camera and the rotation. Let's move it back a bit so we can see these rats. There we go. Let's say about here. There we go. And then if we click on Capture Camera Position, we'll get a message pop up saying Camera Position Captured. So that's confirmed. So the next step will be to add another keyframe and then move your camera to the next important spot. Since I want this camera to pan along the road, the next keyframe will be somewhere over here-ish. Let's turn the camera left a little bit, just to be kind of looking more towards the party there. So once I've got the camera to where I want it to be when it stops panning, I'll click on Capture Camera Position again, and then that's the camera position captured. So onto the last keyframe then, I'll click on Add Keyframe again to create the Keyframe 2 box, and then I'll move the camera to turn and face this maestro over here. We'll get in nice and close, like say here and then I'll click Capture Camera Position on Keyframe 2. So we've now told it where we want the camera to be at each step. Now we need to tell it when the camera should get there. So this is where the Duration and Stop 4 box is coming. The Duration box is basically how long does it take to get from the last position to this one, and Stop 4 is how long should we stop and wait at this position before moving on to the next. The first keyframe is a bit different because it doesn't have a frame before it, so the duration is how long after the cutscene starts should the camera start moving, and stop for is how long after you actually activate the cutscene should the cutscene start. So very niche, you'll mostly be using the ones in the later boxes. So for these, I usually start with two seconds or so in the frame zero duration, just to give a bit of an ease in there, and then five seconds for the rest of them to just kind of get a general feel for how things are going and then I'll put in two seconds stop for on the last one, just so that the cutscene doesn't instantly end as soon as the camera stops moving. Just makes it kind of fade in a little more nicely. And so that's all we need to get a very basic cutscene going. If I click on the play clip button now, and then click on tick, we'll see that the camera does indeed pan along the road and then rotate down to face this guy. We could just leave it at that, but... So having looked at that, I think the first move could stand to be a bit longer, so let's add two seconds to that. 
and the second move could probably stand to be quite a lot shorter. Let's just take away two seconds for now to three, and let's see how that looks. Alright, that's probably good enough for now. What you'll probably end up doing when you're making your own cutscenes is fiddling with the duration and the stop for quite a lot until you get the timing just right, which will of course depend on your scene, what you're doing, what kind of feel you're going for. It's very much a creative kind of thing. So, once we've got the duration and all that roughly right, we should have a look at the next things, which will be the transition and the easing dropdowns. The transition dropdown is quite simple. We've either got chain, which means that the camera will move from the last keyframe to this one, and crossfade, which means that the camera will just fade to black and then teleport to this keyframe. Like if I turn the duration down to like two seconds just to show you. If I set keyframe one to crossfade and then start it, then the camera will fade to the next shot and then carry on as normal. Usually, I set these to chain, but you know, crossfade can be good for moving around a scene a lot, or if you want to fade out of one scene and then fade into another, if you're doing like some video recording type thing. Easing is a bit more complicated. The important first thing to note is that the easing setting on a keyframe relates to the movement between the last keyframe and this one. It doesn't affect anything after this keyframe. And because of this, the names are kind of backwards to what I'd be used to, but this will probably only bother you if you're already an animator. Anyway, overall we've got three different kinds. We've got linear, which means no easing whatsoever. And then we've got quad and cubic. Quad and cubic relate to how the camera accelerates between camera shots, with the quad easing being overall a kind of gentler acceleration, and cubic acceleration accelerates more quickly and decelerates more quickly which I think is also backwards, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but anyway. The quad and cubic each have three options too. There's ease in, ease out, and ease in out. And again, these are also backwards, but in 3D canvas, ease in means that the camera will accelerate coming out of the last keyframe, but not decelerate, so it will reach this frame at full speed. Ease out means that the camera will come out of the last keyframe at full speed and then decelerate until it reaches this keyframe, and ease in out means it will accelerate from the last keyframe and then decelerate down to this one. And so because of this, this is all entirely a stylistic choice. There's not really any right or wrong answers. My only real tip for this would be that if you've got a long camera movement with several keyframes, you probably want to keep all the middle keyframes to linear and then fiddle with the duration until you get a nice constant camera movement because if your camera's rapidly changing speed up and down, it looks a bit kind of juddery, and a nice consistent speed is just nice to watch. Aside from that, what you're probably want, going to want to do is just kind of flip between quad and cubic, see which one you like more, and then just go with that. Uh, difference, of course, with easing on keyframe zero is it doesn't really do anything because there is no frame before frame zero, so you can just ignore that. So for this super simple shot, where we're just kind of panning along and then rotating a bit, Let's set keyframe 1 to linear, so that it gets a nice constant speed along the road. And then we'll set keyframe 2 to ease out quad. And what this should do is cause our camera to pan across the road at a nice constant speed, reach this keyframe and continue at that speed, and then decelerate until it stops on the maestro. So let's set the duration back to what it was before, and then let's give it a test. Yeah, that's roughly what we planned for there. We could spend a while tweaking the duration and the easing and moving the camera around until we get nice smooth movements that we're really happy with. Cutscenes and this sort of thing are a very like creative kind of tool, so it's the kind of thing you could really noodle away at for ages until you get it just right. But for the purposes of this tutorial video here, we'll just leave that at that for now and we'll go over a last couple of bits and pieces in the cutscene panel here. Firstly, there is the caption box. So this caption appears right after the last keyframe ends. So if I put a caption in keyframe 1, let's say 10 miles outside 
when. And then just to make it more clear, let's set the duration for keyframe zero to five seconds. And then if I hit play on that, then we'll see for the first five seconds, nothing will appear. And then once the camera starts moving, we get the cutscene or the caption appear on the screen and then fade out. The time that the caption's on the screen doesn't relate to the duration of the keyframe or anything. It's just on there for like a fixed amount of time. So if you want to do like a series of captions that are maybe telling a story or something, you can time your keyframes just to kind of have them fade in and out as they go. The next thing is immersive mode, which is the checkbox that removes the UI while the cutscene's playing. So let's try that just so I can show you what I mean. And that just means that it looks more like a cutscene because there's no user interface cluttering anything up. You do still see things like the token bases and all that. You can remove those on a token by token basis. This is just, you know, for this tutorial here. And the last thing is just to note that cutscenes are on a scene by scene basis. So this clip here, this intro cutscene, let me just turn edit mode off. This will only appear on this map, so you can only trigger it here. If you save it to a macro, then you can trigger the cutscene on other maps, so the camera will go through the same movements, but if the map is a different size or anything, that might lead to unexpected results, so... You'll probably be making these up on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. And the last thing as well is that you can have as many clips as you like per scene. So I've got the intro cutscene there, and I could make a new clip there, add keyframes to that, set the camera to, you know, be wherever and then have another cutscene that I can play. I left the duration at zero, silly. There we go. So you can have as many cutscenes as you want per scene, but they are scene by scene, anyway. So that is the cutscene panel in 3D Canvas. I'd love to hear about any of your creating cutscenes with this. I know some of you have been already. So let us know down in the comments below on the Discord how you get on with it, or just make any other questions or comments as always. For now though, I'll catch you guys later.